So as a 23 year old, when I hear people talk about the Beatles, it's always described in this way that feels like an alternate reality. Like, oh, I saw them on the TV or the DJ played them on the radio and I lost my mind. But the question we're posing here is not if anyone could be as good as the Beatles ever again, but rather will anyone be able to reach that level of global sustained relevance? Where nearly half a century later, their influence is remembered as fondly as their fame. So I think we can all agree that when an artist gets famous or recognized that there's a lot that goes into it that isn't in their control. Because yes, many artists make amazing work and get recognized for it, but some make amazing work and don't. Nobody cared about Van Gogh until after his death. So this begs the question then, what other external factors are at play in getting recognized? Well, time for one. What technological innovations are at play? Are you doing something new with new tools that hasn't been done before? Two, place. Are you living in a region where getting recognized is an accessible concept? Are you based in a place where there's access to an audience of people who will talk about and support your work. Three, place in history. Now this is a little different from time in that it focuses more on your peers. Who has done what before you? Is there someone doing the same thing as you right now? Are they better? For the Beatles, I think all the stars aligned in the best way possible for all those external factors. Broadcast television proved to be an effective tool in promoting musicians, with Elvis being a huge example that seeing someone perform mattered a lot. The UK has always been a hub of musicians busking and playing on the streets and in pubs, there was a circuit you could run to get people talking, or rather the right people talking. And in terms of place and history, yeah, a bunch of dudes with a career that started with simple yet relatable love songs and evolved to include notes of psychedelia and pure melancholy that cut deeper than other popular music, American girls screaming at the concept of a band with that kind of hair. There were few peers on either end of them in history doing those specific things in that specific combination. I know there's a lot more to it than that, but stick with me because this is not the main point and we don't need to get lost in this detail. The question I'm really posing here is can this level of success, if that's what you want to label it, be replicated? And I'm here to say the answer is no. No matter how good or innovative the act is, no matter how many sales they've done, no matter how crazy their style is, no matter how many shows they've sold out, the answer is no. At least not right now. But hear me out because I don't think my reasoning is that crazy. The cultural zeitgeist when it comes to music today is a completely different animal. Media works completely differently. If TikTok has proven anything, it's that there's a niche for everything. Any kind of music or genre or sound you can imagine, there is likely already a fan base for that's at least the size of your hometown. An algorithm can and likely already is built around you. So you have the ability to be in and stay on your own cultural page. And while sure, you have freedom of choice in what niche you end up in, you also have freedom of choice of whether you choose to explore outside of it. The result is that you can listen to pop music and radio hits and have never heard the name Phoebe Bridgers. Similarly, you can listen to Phoebe Bridgers and have never heard a Kid Leroy song in your entire life. This was simply not the case in Beatlemania. Everyone was locked into the same channels on TV, everyone was listening to the same stations on the radio, and if something was hot, guess what? You and everyone else around you were going to know about it, whether you wanted to or not. Today, there is no cultural thing that keeps us all on the same page. Everyone's social feed is personalized and we often feel like the trending or popular tab is kind of gross and not for us. It almost feels weird to consume media that isn't personalized to our interests. But let's set the media angle aside for a minute. Let's say that there was something to keep us all culturally on the same page, relatively speaking. Even if you managed to break a Beatles record like Drake, it wouldn't matter. There's just so much noise, so many other things to listen to, so many things to watch, so many things that just come and go, that our attention span simply wouldn't allow us to be obsessed with a band for that long and with that level of intensity. Our brains would be so quick to move on or become bored that that person wouldn't really have a shot. The internet would have to essentially not exist again. The only person, in my opinion, who has come close to even a glimpse of that level of a musical chokehold on the world in recent memory is Ed Sheeran. Now hold up, don't you dare go to the comments, right? So you're saying Ed Sheeran is better than the... No, we're not saying that Ed Sheeran is better than the Beatles. I'm saying the sustained, intense cultural relevance he achieved during his career was the closest glimpse of that Beatle level success we've had in a long while. In 2017, you could turn on the radio at any given moment and hear Shape of You. Before that, it was Thinking Out Loud, and before that, it was The A-Team. He was on TV, he was at award shows, he was in movies, he was selling out stadiums regularly. You could not escape this man, even if you tried. TikTok hadn't really become 
become a huge thing yet like it is now, and we were still on a more traditional internet. He was there for the inception of YouTube with cover videos and busking videos going viral, eventually got signed, made super relatable folk pop, used a loop pedal and no band, had super memorable red hair, always wore a flannel. People ate it up. The stars aligned for him on every external factor I mentioned earlier. So my long-winded answer to the question of will there be another Beatles, culturally speaking, is technically yes, but just not right now. I know I said no earlier, but it was kind of like no asterisk, not right now. Now that everyone has access to the same audience and tools, they're all stuck with the same problem, which is place and history. This new version of the internet is going to need to exist for quite a bit longer before anyone figures out how to culturally separate themselves above and beyond the other many amazing artists on this earth. They're going to need to see more data points on how this all plays out. Van Neistat actually has a video, he's Casey Neistat's brother, on a concept from a book that explains that history repeats itself in 80 year cycles. And well, one of those is about to end in a decade or so, and at the start of the next one is supposedly when new profound art is going to emerge. I think toward the end of the 20s or the beginning of the 30s is when we'll see someone who has observed how this whole phase of the internet has played out, take what they know, and use it in a way that will absolutely light the world on fire, in a good musical way. The next Beatles, if you will. Either that or the concept of global mega relevance is dead, but I don't really think so because history repeats itself. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you think there's someone right now or in recent memory that 50, 100 years from now will be considered the next Beatles. I'd love to hear your take on that, and I'll see you in the next one.